All I want for Christmas is the ability to click this button and then to go into these advanced settings and have auto normalization and click it off. My number one thing that I want to see in 2022 is the ability to name our sections. And that would be super cool because if you know GarageBand iOS here, if you go here to the, uh, the sections, hit the plus button, you've got section A, B, and you can see here I've shifted sections around to create different things here. And if I could just name this lead in, intro, verse, chorus, bridge, verse, chorus, out. Like, why? What? That seems like an absolute no-brainer. You've even got an edit button here, which makes you look like you should be able to change them, except you can't. So being able to change your section names. And the weird thing is that you kind of can do it. So GarageBand Mac uses regions, which are different to sections and work in a different way. Number two, and again, these aren't in any order because this is probably the one that would be the number one for me. And that is to have a master track. So if you've used GarageBand on your Mac before, you'll know that you've got all of your individual tracks, but then you've also got at the bottom a master track where all of those tracks all come together into one and you can add effects on that master bus you can eq that master bus you can do automation you can do everything you can on the master bus that you can do on all the other tracks it seems like it would be a pretty simple thing to do it's not here in GarageBand ios at the moment but that's something that i would like to see in the future let's rip the band-aid off and talk about auto normalization so what do i mean when i'm talking auto normalization so here in GarageBand, if you come in here and you select a track and you share it like this and we share it as a song in an uncompressed WAV file in every other DAW in the world, pretty much, we'll just do an open in here and we'll put it into audio share. In every other DAW, it will export at whatever the overall level that you have on your master track is. Now, because GarageBand iOS has no master track, it does something funky, which is auto normalization. Now, at best, auto normalization takes the overall volume of your track from whatever it would be, maybe it was at minus 12 or minus six or minus four, whatever, and it brings it up to zero. So that's not the worst thing in the world because when you master, you can just bring your input gain down and then you can add your mastering. Because when you're mastering something, if you're adding to it, you may need some headroom or some overhead to add your mastering plugins into. However, here in GarageBand, because we export it and it exports it up to zero dB, we don't have that headroom. At worst, because you can't control your master volume, if it's over and above, and I don't know why I picked such a long song, it's taking a long time to export here. Um, if, you, if you've got uh, tracks that are actually going over zero dB, it's actually gonna add some limiting to those tracks. There you go, it's open. So we'll, uh, we'll throw this into audio share and I'll show you what we mean. So look at this, this is what I'm talking about here. So for this particular track, see these peaks? See how these peaks are going all the way up to the top? Now this is not what we want. We would probably want this to be, look more like this. See, because this, this song has this quiet section here where it does this. Where older time is moving on. And so the problem here is that we don't have a lot of headroom to actually use here. Now, because I know a few little tricks around this, uh, and I usually turn my volume down by using a bit of a uh, a bit of a hack here on the on the the master track, which you can kind of do by adding an FX track. Do I have one on here? I do. You can add an FX track here, and you can go to your uh, your mar your visual EQ. And I can actually turn that down. So it's not turned down at the moment. But if I was finding that my peaks were too high, I could actually turn that down. And that will just give a little bit more dynamic range. But the bottom line is, can we please just have a simple button? All I want is, all I want for Christmas is the ability to click this button and then to go into these advanced settings and have auto normalization and click it off. Leave it on for people that need it because some folks may want to continue to have auto normalization, but give us the ability to turn it off. The ability to record in track view. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, if you've ever tried to record vocals in particular or guitars, let's just say uh, I'm recording this vocal track here. Uh, we'll say it's not recorded yet and I want to record, but I want to watch the guitars so that I can see the changes or be able to watch the sections here. So see how I've got my different sections up the top here for my verse and for my chorus and for other things along here. What if I wanted to actually watch them while I record? Well, here's the problem. As soon as I hit record, look what happens. I'm over here. What am I doing over here? I can't see anything. I can see my section thing up the top, but I can't see my drums. I can't see my guitars. I can't see anything up there. So if we undo that, 
What you can do, there is a workaround for this, and you can see that I've probably used this workaround with this one. But if you've got a two-channel interface, you can set it up. Actually, no, that one's saying it's the same channel. You can set it up so you've got your other one on your second channel. So because I'm using a two-channel interface, I can say that one's actually channel two, and then come back to my track view here, and we can set those ones up. And now when I want to go and record, it's going to keep me on my track view, yeah? Right? So that's super handy. But uh, why can't we just have that? Because people that have a single channel interface, if you're using an iRig or if you're just using the built-in microphone, you can't do it. And look, there's absolutely no reason why it can't stay on this view and just record in the background because it can do it when you're doing two tracks. So again, just a little button in here that says record in microphone view or record in uh, icon view or track view. Just a simple setting that you flick between there and then those people like me that are pedantic that want the track view recording, we can have it turned on. That would be super duper cool. We need more plug-in slots for our virtual guitars. This one is baffling because if we use an audio recorder track here and we go to our plugins and EQ, tap there, tap there, look at this, we've got one, two, three, four, five slots. And if we hit the edit there, look, we've got two more. So you've got your noise gate, you've got your visual EQ, and you've got five individual slots there, including four customizable slots that we can put any plugin or audio unit V3 extension that we wanna put on there. Here's the problem, as soon as you want to use, this is why it's a bit wacky, if, if with GarageBand, if you want to use the actual GarageBand amp sims instead, and you come in here and select an amp, look how many slots we now get. We'll come over here, uh, hello, we get one. So you go from four customizable slots to one customizable slot because you're using all these other things in here. Now, this is why for me, I've moved away a little bit from, from the GarageBand amp sims because if I just use a regular audio recorder track like this and add an AUV3 amp sim, something like Tonebridge, so if we just get rid of that and we go here and we bring in the Tonebridge amp, I can use the Tonebridge amp and then a bunch of other plugins as well. I can put Tonebridge on there and then I can get rid of these things and I can add Tonebridge and a bunch of effects to this one track if I use an audio recorder track. So it's basically, it's driving me away from using GarageBand's built-in amp sims because for an arbitrary reason that's probably from the old days, it was probably just when they first set it up, they thought, ah, no one will want to add any more AU plugins or anything else if they've got all of these powerful pe pedals and amps and controls over there but it's just a little bit wacky that we've only got uh, the the ability to add one additional uh, plug-in slot to our guitar amp sim so more of those would be good the ability to map your midi keyboard would be kind of cool and this is one that's going to cross over from ios and mac because it's not really done well on either of them so when you're playing a midi instrument uh, i don't have a midi keyboard plugged in right now but if you're playing on your touch screen here that's all cool. The problem is if you are using an external MIDI keyboard, you can't actually change anything. So for instance, what some MIDI keyboards do is on the hardware side, they can let you change, like Aturia key steps and key labs and things do this really well. They'll let you change on the hardware side. So if you wanted to play in like B major, you could just make it go up a tone and you can play it in C major. But what a lot of DAWs, so someone mentioned Reaper before, what a lot of other doors like Reaper do is they let you change all that on the software side. So you can do things like transpose your keyboard, you can change the different keys of what they do, and even things like playing drums with your MIDI keyboard, you can assign them. You can use custom assignments to be able to assign different pads. And again, maybe this is next level, maybe this is not what GarageBand's all about, but even some basic transposition. So you could just say, point it to your MIDI keyboard and say, hey, I don't really wanna play in B flat major. I wanna play in C major because I don't like them black notes. Let's transpose that sucker up one tone. That would be kind of cool. If you know about GarageBand, you will know that you can now import MIDI so you can actually come up here and if you've got a MIDI file, do I have a MIDI file anywhere here? I don't think I've, I don't think I've imported one lately. Uh, but if you've got a MIDI file, you can grab it and you can drag it in and it's gonna import all of your MIDI tracks. I've got videos here on the channel that have showed how to do that before. You know what you can't do with GarageBand? is export your MIDI. So for this one, I've, uh, I've created this lovely grand piano track here in my song six and eight, it sounds like this. If I want to get this out of GarageBand, I've only got one option, and that is to export it as an audio file. It's in there as data. You can see there, I've played it on my keyboard all the way through. The same with this oboe sound, uh, clarinet sound. If I wanted to get these sounds to come through, so she 
there is no export MIDI option in GarageBand. So that is another thing that would be super cool, the ability to export that MIDI. And then if you were using a hybrid setup, you're using Reaper or you wanted to share it, this is the, the number one thing I hear from folks is, hey, I'm collaborating with someone and I want to send them my tracks and th they've asked for the MIDI. And I say, well, you're going to have to tell them that they're SOL, which as we know, means sort of out of luck. The compatibility between iOS and Mac, we talked about it with the sections. It is not quite there yet. It has come a long way. So you may be aware that in 2021, a lot of things were added. So for instance, here in GarageBand iOS, we got the new Brush Drummers Pack, which is one that had been in GarageBand on Mac for a very long time. I can't go to my drummers, I've already got two added. So you've got the, the new Brush Drummers for your drum kits here in GarageBand. We also got all of the, uh, the new sound packs. So if we come over here to your uh, sound library... The new sound packs that we got in here, all of the uh, artist and producer packs, the Mark Ronson, the Tom Mish, the Mark Lettieri, all of those ones, they're all in there. And they were actually then added into Mac because the problem was they all got added in here to iOS and then when people shared their iOS projects to Mac, they didn't work anymore and that was no good. So that was pretty cool to see. So we've now got the alignment of all the sound packs and the majority of the, sign, uh, the, majority of the sounds, but we still don't have alignment with a lot of things. So obviously the biggest challenge is AUV3 plugins that we have on iOS versus audio unit or AU plugins on Mac. Now the way to get around this at the moment is to export as stems. I've got videos on that here on the channel. If you search my name, Pete John Stems, it'll show you how to stem out of GarageBand iOS so you can import it into GarageBand Mac or Reaper or Pro Tools or whatever platform you're using. So that's kind of the only real way because what that'll do is bake in any of those effects and make it able for you to share. But what we don't have is the ability for any more levels of sharing between iOS and Mac. And Again, I think we're getting there. I think we're on the right track. Number nine, I've showed a bunch of tips lately for how to copy between your drums, your keys, and string tracks. So unfortunately, if you were, say, you've got these piano sound, and you're like, oh, I really like this piano bit here, but I'd really love to see hear what this sounds like on this string track. Yeah, guess what? We can't do it. Now, you can do it, and there's a workaround for it. And again, if you, if you search Pete John's strings to keys or keys to strings, I'll, I'll link it down in the description, then you'll be able to find that. But for the time being, we can't do it. The fact that there's a hack and a workaround that lets you do it means that it's sitting there in behind. So this is one that I think could be pretty simple, which is just, let's just open up the ability to copy between a string track and a keys track or a keys track and a drum track. I think, and I'm, I'm only just guessing here, but I think this is one of those ones where Apple say, we don't want people to do this and it sound bad and it causes problems and it maybe it corrupts the track or it does something. So we're just going to completely block it entirely. So it, it's like we want to protect them from themselves, which I get for your average user. But if you're a power user, just stick it in, stick it in here, have advanced settings and go uh, copy between. Like I would just love to see, I don't want to see this become super cluttered, but I would love to see a bunch of advanced settings in here. Enable master track, disable auto normalization and copy between string and key tracks or copy between different MIDI types. And number 10, and again, these aren't in any particular order, but automation. So automation here in GarageBand iOS. In GarageBand on Mac, you've got automation of all of your different types. So you've got automation of your EQ and your effects and your AUV3s and anything you want. Here in GarageBand, we've got automation of volume. So I come in here to my, uh, my vocal track. So Son, you'd better and I want to automate it. I can do that. While you've got the chance, I can turn on the automation, the talent. and I can uh, automate the volume up and down. But I... in different sections, I can add in additional points, and we can actually automate our volume up and down. Oh, it doesn't. There you go. And hang out with the boys. But what we can't do is automate effects. We can't automate EQ. We can't automate any of our other attributes so the ability to have just like we have in mac a little thing here saying here's the effect that you have and which would you like to actually automate